A harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. And you know, you also see that um, like one of the central <clears throat> female stories, let's say, um, if the hero archetype is the central male story, there are variants of hero archetypes that are relevant to women, and one of them is Beauty and the Beast. And you know, Beauty isn't interested in the guy who isn't the beast. She's interested in the guy who's the beast, and that's exactly right, but he, she's interested in the guy who's the beast that can be civilized and disciplined, right, and who can use that in the service, well, let's say, of a family. Well, what I really liked about Beauty and the Beast, and I do think that's the best Disney movie ever made, was that it's a real female hero myth. I mean, the woman, Beauty, is beautiful, so she's high up in the female dominance hierarchy, but she's witty and well-read and intelligent and adventurous and brave and courageous and truthful, mm -hmm. all of that. And she doesn't fall for Gaston, the psychopathic persona. And young women are much more likely to fall for men like that, by the way, than, than women who are slightly more, uh, um, what would you say? Mature. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wise, wiser. So they'll fall for dark triad men, and that's partly how psychopathy propagates itself across the generations. Mm -hmm. right? They can be enticed by psychopathic personas. But she prefers the beast. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, the beast is the adventure. It's like, well, is this terrible man, you know, like he's he's rough, he's unhewed, he's, he's, but he's got potential. Right? And that's what really attracts her. And she wants someone who can guard the walls and make a safe haven for the children, but who's generous enough to, who's productive enough to be useful and generous enough to share. Mm -hmm. And so she civilizes him. And that's, you know, you say, well, that's the female hero myth. It's like the civilizing of men is the female hero myth. And the civilizing of nature, in some sense, is the male hero myth. The plot is that the woman encounters this mysterious and aggressive male and tames him. That's the female hero myth, as far as I can tell. It's Beauty and the Beast. And so it's because, well, there's no fun in taming someone who's already tame. And what makes you think you really want someone who's tame anyways? There's no interest in that. Plus, when, when, when chaos manifests itself, what makes you think that someone tame is gonna be good for anything? And it's a real question, and so that aggression is absolutely vital, it's absolutely necessary. But because it's inc incredibly dangerous, which of course it is, it has to be civilized. And so what happens is that the archetypal female in these pornographic romances seduces and tames the aggressive male. And that's her encounter with chaos.